Namaste, my Indian friends. This is Michael from Circus Maximus. You are listening to Mekwani. Rock on! Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How's the day going on? Oh, it's a, it's been a good day. It's a nice weather, uh, and I've uh, been at the gym working out, you know. <laughs> That's cool. So, what's happening lately in Circus Maximus camp? Yeah, right now we um, more or less just focus on creating the new album. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, we real, uh, we, we reala- realized when we wrote uh, a nine album nine. that... We did too much concerts in between, so every time we did all these shows, mm-hmm. the new album got delayed. Uh-huh. So now we just um, we going to do maybe I'm not sure, but as of now we have a concert in Holland mm-hmm. and one show in uh, UK this cool. year. So that's because we just want to make this album and not. Uh, focus on live shows. We'll, uh-huh. we'll do that next year anyway. <laughs> uh, so the plan is to release it later this year or next year? No, the, the plan uh, is, uh, we're thinking March next year. We're, uh-huh. we're, we're working on making that happen. So so that's also why we just, we're in, right in the focus uh, of uh, creating okay. the album. We have more or less uh, nine songs that are 70% completed. So. Cool. Uh, Yes, so we are we are in the making. <laughs> Wonderful. So how many long pieces of more than ten minutes? Oh, epic I can't pieces. Tell. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, we have some epic pieces. We have, uh, I think, uh, right now we have one song that uh, really is going to be uh, some epic stuff. Wow. It's more like it's more like I can say. It's more like the glory, uh, uh, the glory empire, <laughs> or something yeah, like the well, first actually, chapter. Then, then, then it's two songs that actually I like that because the wow. one song is more or less burn after reading part two. It's mm-hmm. not. That it's part two, but it's uh, it has the same atmosphere. And actually, okay. as as you said, we also had one song that we wrote for the nine album that we called uh-huh. "Glory Empire 2. Oh, and it didn't make to the CD, right? No, it did. No, it didn't. It it didn't actually fit in more or less because, as you can hear on the nine album, uh, a song like "Glory of the Empire" wouldn't fit in. It's more, it's more. Uh, well, what we, how can you say it's more power metalish? Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, it didn't have that red uh, thin line that we have right. on all the other songs. So hopefully we can, we are uh, creating on that song now and changing some patterns and some chords and stuff. So hopefully we'll see Glory of the Empire Part Two <laughs> this wow. time around. You never know, of course. We're still in the making. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Right from the first chapter to isolate and then nine. Yeah. You you have shown tremendous growth in terms of songwriting, arrangement, yeah, thank you. and so on. Thank so, you, thank you so much. Uh, but, you know, there's something, uh, <clears throat> you know, that I like the way you guys blend different styles and yes. come up with something different on every album. Yes. So, how and do that, you guys figure out that? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's like the, the older we get or uh, the more uh, uh, experienced we get in writing songs and mm-hmm. And, and of course, if you do a live show, you see which songs actually click with the fans. It's, right. uh, do they like the up tempo songs? Do they like it slow? Or do they like to the sing along? Or you know, we are so uh, lucky that Circus Maximus uh, fans are so well different, if you may say. You know, it's uh, some like this, some like that. So um, right. and 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 all of them like uh, Circus Maximus <laughs> in one way or the other. Right. So, like you said, you like the long epic songs and of course we do that as well and, and you have those people who say, why do you write so long songs? <laughs> I like the short ones. <laughs> you Progressive know? metal is meant to have long pieces. Yes, it's true. <laughs> it's fun also when you, uh, I remember when we wrote uh, the first chapter song. Mm-hmm. It's over 20 minutes long but yes. it's uh, it doesn't feel like it when you start to listen to it because uh, yeah, we, we, we it, hit it off good with that song. <laughs> right, it's a puzzle, you know, the first chapter yeah, is a puzzle. Yes, it it's takes its own time to figure out. And yeah. I've been to gigs, bands usually don't prefer to have a long song in their set list. So, yeah. have you guys played it live? Yeah, yeah, we actually did it. Uh, we were in the, we were in uh, America now last fall mm-hmm. at that Prague Power USA festival. Right. And uh, yeah. we, did, we did that as a special treat for the people over there. Mm-hmm. 
So and we done it. Uh, we played it on our Euro European tour as well. But uh, cool. you know how it is. Uh, some of the people, well, people like the new album. Some like Isolate, and some people have been around for a long time, and some are new. Yes. And first chapter in a, if you play one and a half hour, suddenly you have twenty minutes. <laughs> out of that set just in All one right. song so one yeah song. you know but we try to play it sometimes and uh, we'll see if we'll we're, we're thinking about because next year it's actually 10 years anniversary cool. regarding the first chapter so um, that's yes, actually 2005 something it was released yeah yeah. Right, yeah so that could be something cool uh, to do the whole album in some shows or something you know like people do just for a pleasant treat for the fans yeah, <laughs> yeah that's absolutely true now yeah. you know uh, this, this one song in uh, isolate with, where mm -hmm. you managed to to you know to imp make an impact on everybody's heart yeah when i would say impact i mean a very strong impact and that track yeah. is zero oh yeah thank you thank you so yes. you know let me be honest with you that track has been in my ipod from so many years oh. and it's been especially for the amazing vocals oh thank you so much thank how you. <laughs> did you manage to do it how did you manage to you know it that song doesn't take you know time to get into your you know it gives oh. you goosebumps every time i listen to yeah, it yeah well, thank you so, how, how was the experience of writing that song that was actually something that me and uh, Lasse, our keyboard player we sat down and uh, actually we were trying or well, not trying we just wrote a song thinking that it would be some bonus track for the japanese version or something like that mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we recorded that song in one day or something and and the guys liked it, so it's, it, it, at first it, it only had uh, uh, pianos and some acoustic guitars in the back and vocals. Mm -hmm. But um, the guys, you know, the, the rest of the band started to like it, and it, it, and it fits the story of the, the character in, in the album. Right. So, so um, I'm glad that it ended up in the, in the, <laughs> on Isolator, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm glad that you like it, because, you know, it's very deep, deep, uh, the lyrics are really Yeah, nice the lyrics are very yeah. deep, yeah. Mm. Uh, that sounds great. Along with the uh, zero, there's one more track, an instrumental song called Biosphere. Yeah. And, and that song is it's just you know Mats and your ex keyboard player Espen. Yeah. Uh, that is more like a beautiful magic in there. So yeah. you know, I always wonder how does one you know a keyboard and a guitar, just one guitar, mm. create such a beautiful piece of music? Yes, uh, Mats, uh, he, he's an he's a he's an extraordinary guy uh, when it comes to playing, and most of all. He can play whatever whatever he wants to play, you know. It's it's what that kind of guitar player. But right. what I uh, appreciate the most about Mats is that his songwriting. Uh, and there, are, there are many guitar players out there who can play guitar, you know. There are many many good players, True. but there's not that many good songwriters, right. you know. Right. I, I I can bet you one hundred dollars that you can find ten really good guitar players. And ask him to write a song, and only few will be able to do it. Only, only one that would be Mats <laughs> would actually be the one saying this song doesn't need a guitar solo. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> you know? Absolutely true. I agree with being, you. Being a guitar player and actually creating a song that don't, doesn't uh, need a guitar, guitar solo, solo. that's uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> wow, that that absolutely is. You know, I've been listening to prog metal from close to one decade, and. Yeah. The first time I got my hands on first chapter, uh, mm. after listening to the album for, for a good duration, I could easily place that album right next to Image and Words. Yes, oh, so, thank you. So, you know, it was like that it felt for me. Uh, did you ever thought your debut album will shine out so well? No, you know, you, you, uh, the first album that, you know, every band releases, you know, uh, you have your lifetime to create that one. And, yeah. uh, so, uh, and you, you, you can't know what people would like, of course, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, you hope the people will pass it uh, on to the friends and everything. But it sure made a good impact, and um, it got us eager to write more songs, and that's how Isolate got created. And that yeah. was harder to make because you, you thought about what the fans would think. You know, should right. we write first chapter part two, or should we just write what we want to write? And that's that's the main thing about Circus. We write just what we want to write. That's right. why you can hear the three different. The three albums are so different, but still they are same. You know, you hear it's melodic, but still there's this this atmosphere about each album that uh, you know makes it their own. 
absolutely true. Now, you guys are also known to, you know, to have a long gap between your albums. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> so, I, I am still uh, unsure about uh, having a new release by next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made a promise and we made some bets uh, that uh, we have to release the album next year. We don't want to do it like last time. Because what happened last time is we released Isolate in 2007. Years. Yes, but the main thing is we toured a lot and played a lot of shows for the next two years. Mm -hmm. So when we started to write the Nine album, we more or less used only three years on that one. But still, three years is a long time. But yeah. things happen, you know. Uh, our drummer Trolls, he got his, he got injured in his his, his legs. And oh. Mots, our guitar player, he he couldn't play guitar or mm -hmm. use his computer for six months. So shit happens, you know. And I had some problems with my vocals as well. So. You know, shit happens. But um, are it, you guys it, it, working? Eventually, it was a good album. <laughs> uh, right. Are you guys working? I mean, do you guys have a day job? Yeah. Yes. Uh, everybody has something to do. You know. And that makes you it have difficult. To. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. And that's exactly how it is. Uh, if you, uh, Mats, our guitar player, you know, he he actually works at um, a guitar music store. You know, okay. so that's perfect. But if you can just imagine how his day would be, you know, he right. works from ten o'clock. So six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then he comes home to his family, and eats dinner uh, maybe Sleeps. for two hours. Uh -huh. And then he have to create music from yeah. nine o'clock at night. Then you're tired. Uh -huh. So you have one hour each day that you write music, <laughs> more or less. Right, right. I oh, get although oh, the good thing about uh, Mots uh, as being the main uh, songwriter, he um, he can call me and he can say, "Oh man, I have this cool riff going on." And I say, "Oh, okay, my can let me hear it." Well. I'm on the subway. I, uh, I have to get home and, and record it first. <laughs> so he, he and then and then he comes home and he and he records it and sends it to me. Mm -hmm. And it's this crazy with drums and everything. And he had all that figured out in his head right, on the subway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's absolutely awesome. And and uh, how do you come up with you know your vocal melodies and lyrical yeah. content? I mean. Uh, are you part of the songwriting as well, apart from yeah. your, your vocals is your department, I agree with that, but when it comes to the arrangements and the songwriting, uh, how, yeah. how much is your contribution to that? Yeah, Everybody has a, a contribution more or less, mm -hmm. uh, either it's a lyric or it's a, a, a pattern on guitars or it's, it's you know, it's a, an intro or whatever, mm -hmm. and that's how we like to do it, of course, and uh, how we did it on the Nine album, uh, for those three years that we wrote and recorded the album two times a week mm -hmm. I was over at Mats's place mm -hmm. and we sat there for two to three hours two times a week for three years <laughs> more or less that's okay. how we did it. that's how, how, how he and I worked together and uh, then uh, he would have some ideas and I would listen and I would come to my ID and he would oh that, I can kick I can kick it from that and you know when he uh, had some cool melody lines and mm -hmm. You know, we felt that yeah, that this is how we should do it. Right. So, and then and then trolls the drummer, his brother comes over and he hears the same stuff and he tries to come see his his ideas and you right. know that's how it goes. That's right. the, that's the fun thing about being a musician and creating art. <laughs> True, that absolutely is. And you know, how, how does it feel that because uh, the first thing I I noticed on uh, the the first chapter is uh, the artwork has that guy with the cycle. Yeah, and then after five years or six years, I see the same cycle on Dream Theater's yes. <laughs> dramatic turns. So for the first time, I felt you know somehow somewhere John Petrucci has been influenced by your music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so because Actually, I, I got to be honest with you, Matt's is dangerously, dangerously close to John Petrucci. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm being very honest. Good. I mean, in yeah, terms of his songwriting and and skills, yeah. he's dangerously close. And you know. He's I've been wondering, I have seen this somewhere, where did I see this? And after doing some research, I could find out, oh God, this is part of uh, Circus Maximus' de yes. debut album art. <laughs> so I was discussing with my band members that, are you guys aware of this? Like, oh my God, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> yeah. it, it was really cool. Have you guys shared the stage with Dream Theater, uh, you know, anytime? No, ne ne never sh sh shared the, uh, uh, the stage, but... Uh... We are uh, on uh, emailing on a day, uh, occasionally with uh, James Labrie. Mm -hmm. uh, he's become a good friend of ours uh, during the last years, and uh, they were here uh, two months ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, the band went down there, and we had you know guest passes, so we we hang out with the band for uh, for an hour or two. Nice. I, I wasn't there; I couldn't I couldn't be there, but. Um, 
then of course they were talking about that unicycle guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's that's nothing to do with Dream Theater uh, picking out that uh, ah, artwork. Course, you, you know yeah. how it is, but, yeah, but still. Yeah. And actually, I, on, I was actually when I went on this Bahamas cruise, uh, Monsters mm -hmm. of Rock Canal, I came home two weeks ago almost. Then I met uh, Mike Portnoy. He was there playing with uh, Winery Dogs. Winery Dogs, yeah. Yeah, so uh, he and I was uh, uh, laying on a sudden bed uh, in, in, on, the, on the beaches of Bahamas. Uh, <laughs> so I good. talked a little bit to him uh, about uh, maybe sometime in the future we'll play in, at his cruise. Uh -huh. uh, the, the, uh, the Prague the next cruise. Nation. Yeah. 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 So we'll see how that goes. So, oh, that's, yeah, so that's nice. we're in touch with the people around, you know. That's wonderful. It. If, if yeah. I'm not wrong, uh, I, I read somewhere on Mike Portnoy's site that he considered uh, first chapter as one of his favorite albums of 2005. Yeah, that can, that can be true because uh, I was emailing back and forth with him um, uh, a couple of months ago regarding that Progress in Nation cruise. Uh -huh. So uh, and then he talked about um, you know how we uh, liked our music. Is like, oh, cool, cool to hear. You know, you never know. Yeah. But of course, as you said, you can see it on sites that. There's interviews with the uh, different band members, right, and, right. and mention your. And th that's the coolest thing, actually. I have to tell you, this was cool. We were at this uh, another cruise with Circus Maximus and uh -huh. Queen Strike, with the uh, Todd Dator were playing, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've been hanging out with them many times before. We played also uh, support gigs with Queen Strike before. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was sitting there uh, at dinner, and uh, Todd Dator and Michael Wilton were sitting there, and uh, mm -hmm. and then they told me that. When they were uh, mixing and mastering, you know, uh -huh. their their latest release, yeah, the, the thing they did, they they they, uh, they had their CD in the in the in the player, mm -hmm. and they listened to the sound. Mm -hmm. They took it out and they put nine in, uh -huh. and then they write down what they wanted to hear, and then they took the nine album out and they put their new album in, and that's how they wanted to get that sound. Cool. So that, I was I was like, what? You were comparing your album to mine? I like it. <laughs> wow, that's the that's best cool. album sound ever. So thank you. I didn't know. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Even that's a, the Queen's Reich album was mind-blowing. Yeah, it was very, very good. I'm glad to hear, uh, you know, the guys on top of the tour, man. Wow, he's a wow. singer. He's Woo! an amazing guy. Amazing guy. I, I see kind of, you know, the, the energy is back in Queen's Reich after a decade. Oh, say. yes. Oh, yes. So what, what, what's, uh, what's uh, you know, which part are you guys taking forward, you know, there are labels that are, you know, specific into prog rock or metal, for example, yeah. K-Scope or Inside Out. Mm. So you guys are right now with Frontier Record, if I'm not wrong? Yeah, we've been with Frontier for many years. Uh, yes, so, they've, they've been, yeah. yeah, is there, a, you know, the number of records you'll be releasing with them or is it anything of that sort or it's just... Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think we're, uh, they are optional or one more album, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but still, we, we just write the album and we take it from there. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, yes... Uh, I, th I think uh, nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, if you're an Inside Out, of course, people who listen to pe re releases from Inside Out, right. they expect some kind of, this is the music that we expect. Yeah. And the same thing is with Frontiers. People expect melodic rock music, so we're like somewhere in between, you yeah. know? But it, I think it doesn't matter that much because um, which al which uh, which record company you are on, as long as you have your internet to yeah. spread the word to the to the, to the fans anyway, right. you know, because right. right. they will spread the word anyway, you know. Absolutely true, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and prog musicians generally don't like, you know, don't like labels. You guys don't like exactly. labels. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Everybody says, what kind of metal do you play? <laughs> oh, you know, it's melodic. <laughs> But it, it, you play progressive metal. What's that? <laughs> it, it gets difficult because you know some say I hear some seventies prog elements and some say yeah. I hear that heavy metal elements. So it's very difficult to get labeled and and uh, honestly it, it feels weird to you know to label a prog metal band because oh, yeah. you cannot just call them progressive metal. No. They have their own set of influences. Yes, so but if of course. I would, because, yeah. Yeah, so if I would have to ask you, where do you think uh, Circus Maximus you know lies? I think of us as uh, first, first and foremost a metal band, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So people say I play metal music, but we sing. Uh, we have um, our main focus on uh, is the metal music, mm -hmm. but it's also having the a good, a great uh, mel melodies um, right. singing. You know, uh, we're all about creating good songs. That's so uh, that that that's what I say to people when right. they ask me. And if they're more interested in music, then I can uh, 
drop it down to if you like bands like Dream Theater, yeah. <laughs> if you like blah 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 blah, then oh yeah, I heard those. Yeah, that kind of music. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. And and what what are your favorite prog albums of 2013? I'm I'm sure you would have heard a lot. So, oh, uh, which albums I, I, shined out I'm for not, you? 2013. I'm not I'm not that sure actually because I honestly don't listen to. Uh, to all the new stuff that comes out, you know, uh-huh. occasionally you get, you know, an email, she got this band, and I was like, oh, cool, cool. Uh-huh. So, uh, and that's how I felt it when I went on this Bahamas cruise again, because mm-hmm. many of those bands I listened to back then in the 80s, but I don't listen to them anymore, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was good to see them live, of course, the bands, but... Um, Refreshing. But, uh, so, so my music influences changes, you right. know? Some, right. I can be in the mood for Symphony X, of course, I will never get tired of that stuff. <laughs> uh, or uh, I can listen to Richard Marx crying out loud, you Ooh. know. That's, yeah. But of course, I must say, one of my main songwriter idols must be Kip Winger uh, from Winger, you know. He's, uh, he's, he's a great songwriter. Cool. Yeah. That's so you don't, awesome. when, he, when he releases an album, you don't know what to expect <laughs> right. with, his, with his solo album because. Uh, like for Richard Marx, you can expect something, you know. There's an element uh, of surprise. Yes, exactly. That's what I like. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. So, so, so back to your question. I'm not sure <laughs> which band. <laughs> tell, tell me two or three bands that released the album. That uh, maybe, you, you, yeah. you got it. You got to check out Arian. Uh, oh yeah, of course, of course. Arian's new album. I was actually album. emailing to with Arian Lucas and about the uh, masterpiece. Yeah. You know, masterpiece. Oh, yeah, yes, the album is course. fantastic. It has so many singers are there, and everybody leaves a mark. And you, yeah. must, you must check out Hakin. Oh, oh yes. Beautiful Mozart, album, The Mountain. He sent me The Mountain. He, he sent, he, a Mozart guitar player sent me a link uh, with one of those songs. And then uh, the atmosphere, you know. Beautiful. I, I, really, I really like that. It was very good. That, that's fantastic album. And uh, even from Norway, they're your friends, Leprous. Yes, uh, they're also making good uh, yes. mark in the territory. Th- those guys came to India uh, last year, and along, yes. along with Isan. So it was, it was it was great seeing them live. They are a really really you know great uh, progressive. How, how, how many people were to, at the uh, was it the festival or something? Yes, it was uh, in in India. There's one major festival which happens every year, and that is Bangalore Open Air. Oh yes. And uh, generally bands come out every. Last year we had uh, Dark Tranquility, Isan, yeah. Leprous, Animal as Leaders, uh, yes. Ice Earth. Mm-hmm. So we had so many bands. This year there's a plan of. Uh, uh, having two bands, we have Mayhem and Sodom. Oh yeah. Although there are two more bands, they are looking forward to add, and I've given my, you know, yes. you know the list <laughs> of uh, prog. I've, I've considered <laughs> Hakin, and you know, I'm, I'm just thinking of another band. So hopefully, I'm, I'll try my level best to get you guys to India. Yes, please do because we have been emailing back and forth. I think maybe it's just the same festival, uh, not for this year, but last year. Uh huh. Um, is it? How many people are at the festival? That 15, 20,000 people? Yes. Could it be that? Yes. 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 Then it's the same festival, yeah. Close to 15, 20,000. And generally, there are a lot of festivals which have been happening in India. So, yeah. some way or the other, you guys will come here. <laughs> yes, we will. And we must, you know, because we do get a lot of emails from, uh, from fans in, in India. Cool. And, and, and Indians dig progressive music. <laughs> yes, well, that, uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, I'll end the interview on a very short note. Uh, Nine songs, 70% done. If I would have to ask you, how would you uh, define the new album in, in, uh, in a sentence? How would you do that? Oh, it's uh, Barry White meets uh, Linkin Park. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, come on. That's, that's an unexpected... <laughs> <laughs> That's an unexpected definition. <laughs> well, all I can say, all I can say, uh, uh, you can hear it's it's a new approach on the nine album. Uh-huh. I must say that this the last two years that we've been listening to music and you know what's in there on the radio, what's hyped or whatever, you know, uh-huh. we really uh, like the um, the the atmosphere of songs that the melodies are mm-hmm. so like you say with Hawking, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that, mm-hmm. that melodies that are what what the, what the hell are they singing there? Those yeah. melody lines are so cool, you know, on that kind of guitar riff. So they're really not going uh, into arrival of love uh, songs, mm-hmm. more or less. That's you know pure melodic, right? But uh, if you can say um, 
it's it's always hard to explain a new music, you know. But, uh, <laughs> right. All I can say it's a it's a it's a fresh breath of air, and the people are going to be amazed. It's uh, I'm listening to the songs every day, <laughs> and I'm like, God, wow, people wow, are that's awesome. On this one, that's cool. So I don't know when am I going to get a demo to ha have a shot at that. Probably it's <laughs> it'll be by our frontiers very soon. Yeah, of course, and it's it's like we also listen to Coldplay, you know, people that be band like Coldplay, oh, great yeah. songs, you know. I mean, uh, there yeah, are people so, who who say that you know metal musicians shouldn't uh, you know listen to pop and other bands. I don't agree with that. Oh, uh, I mean, don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Everybody has their own taste, so one just has to appreciate the taste. That's all. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, one of the main bands that are uh, been inspiring us for the last two years uh, or more is. Of course, you have Opeth and you have Muse. Oh, those those two bands, and of course, Muse again is also crazy when it comes to melody lines. They have their own yes. style, of course, and you hear it right away. Like we did on Burn After Reading song, that's very very much Muse right. inspired. So Absolutely. I like that. Trying to throw the listener off by it. oh my god, they're seeing so strange melody lines, but it's so <laughs> cool on that pattern. <laughs> Uh, your your melodies are, are are top notch as well. It's not just in zero. I mean, if I travel through your discography, I find yeah. so many tracks where the vocals are. You know, it's not like you know. Sometimes people feel that progressive metal should be instrumental, and I don't agree with that. Even even with the bands like Animal as leaders, etc., they don't mm. they don't want to have a vocals in that. I think they should do that because mm. you know the vocals leave their own mark on instrumental exact, music. Exactly. That's that's exactly. So yeah, that's it. Great. So, it's been an honor to have you, uh, you know, with us. I'm sorry for a delay. I don't think about that. I've just been sitting here watching YouTube. You know. <laughs> cool, and and uh, I am looking forward to uh, the the mixture of uh, Linkin Park. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coming, and very white. <laughs> and very white coming up soon. So thank you so much once again. You know, appreciate it. Uh, feel free to you know send me an email on, on the Facebook again when um, when the this interview comes. Is sure. it going to be audio or are you going to write it down as an? Uh, I, I'm just gonna edit it and and, yeah, yeah. and just gonna put it accordingly. So I'll, I'll keep you yeah. updated. And to your fans in India, shoot a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you say uh, what's up? It's you can say, hey, come on, dude, you have a song called Namaste. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you Namaste, can use that. Indi- yeah. Okay, I'll do it now. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Namaste, my Indian friends. This is Michael from Circus Maximus. And we hope that we can bring our music down to India to perform it live from you next year. <laughs>